Hey guys, welcome to another Grow With Dan. Today we're going to be talking about fertilizers. And uh, we got Happy Frog out again because that's our most used one and the one we tell people about the most. So we're going to talk a little bit more about actual fertilizers. One of the things that I didn't think about when I just started doing our videos, we wanted to jump in, show you guys what we're using, and that's all well and good. But one of the things people keep telling me is, why don't you start from the beginning and not start where you're at? So we're going to go rewind and we're going to go back and tell you originally what fertilizers to use, how they're used, what they do, even how to read them. So one of the things we want to start out is when you read a fertilizer, almost every single fertilizer in bold letters is going to tell you 5, 8, 4, or 1, 6, 3, or whatever the number may be. A lot of people that means nothing. That's like showing them, I don't know, Arabic and we have no idea how to read it or Spanish and you don't know how to speak Spanish or, you know, it's another language, put it that way. Um, basically, five is your nitrogen, okay? So nitrogen is what's going to green up your plants. It's going to help them grow, uh, help the photosynthesis happen with all that. So in beginner plants, you're going to want a lot of the nitrogen and this one's going to have you know a pretty good amount but this is for flowering and what we're going to get in next is the eight so the eight is basically the phosphorus levels and that's going to break out your uh, flowering it's going to help out with root structure underground and it's also going to help to build the actual plant the structure of it so that's a good thing to look at too this one's basically for fruit and flower so this is actually going to be the most every time so you might see one six eight you might see something like this so the last one is going to be your potassium levels and the potassium levels are actually gets um, what's going to draw out the very end product for us that's what we look for so the last one we'll use is going to be a high percentage in this and this and nothing in this and that will actually make the plant it'll tell the plant that it's time to finish up and you know uh, ripen up the tomatoes or whatever you're putting on it so um, that's kind of how you read it those are the um, starting ones now right here it says with active soil microbes that means that once this is put into the ground it doesn't just stop working it actually starts putting microbes into the soil that are good which colonate your roots and stuff like that so that is an added benefit now one of the things that we're looking at is this is five percent nitrogen this is ten percent I mean eight percent of this four percent of this now we're gonna add all these together which is only gonna give us like what 17% so 17% is what's in here of these the rest of this is all fillers so I wanted to talk about fillers one of the things that you're gonna get in fillers is like gypsum stuff like um, stuff that's gonna actually help out but it's not actually added into the beginning of this because this is telling you what's gonna give you the bang for your buck basically they're trying to get you to buy it for the 584 telling you that this is going to help you flower but also it's going to help you break stuff into the ground it's going to help you with all the micro organisms that actually you're going to need colonating to grow these big plants that once you put water into them it's just going to go even more so that's one of the things that you want to look into when you're looking into um, different types of fertilizers you may look at um, say one of the things you'll look at when you go the difference between organic and non-organic, you know, chemical fertilizers, those numbers are going to be a lot bigger because uh, they don't have those extra fillers because they don't need them. They're giving you exactly what you need right then and there, but it's not a sustainable long-term thing where these fertilizers are actually colonizing the soil, which chemical fertilizers, you're just using what you're giving and, and that's as far as it goes. So that's the one thing we wanted to talk about with fertilizers. Um, we're going to go through a couple different fertilizers to show you the numbers and you can think about, you know, what you're using it for. We'll show you a little bit of what they're used for. So this is the one we use to start all our tomatoes, peppers, vegetables. 
the reason for that is when you look at this, the seven's going to green up your plants, and, and your plants need to green up to take in sunlight, especially when they're smaller, because they need that sunlight to, you know, grow and produce cells, stuff like that. So this also will give us 4%, which is half of what the flowering one does. And that will also give us a stable roots because you still do want good roots. But as you can see, the five is going to give us a, is a good amount of that, which will actually stabilize everything. And, and you're going to want that in the beginning. And then, like I said, we'll switch over to the happy frog fruit and flower when it's time to flower. And we want to get big boosts. So that will give us um, bone meal and stuff like that, which just makes your plants explode with flowers. If you've seen our videos, you know it works. Um, we're going to go now into some of the indoor stuff. Now, this is what I'm talking about at the end. If you can see this, it's tiny, so I don't know if you guys can see this, but it says 0.5 and 0.7 and absolutely zero. This is my very end product that I put on everything at the very end so that it green, well, it actually makes everything turn from green to red like this this is basically telling all my plants that it's time to switch over it's the end of the season or we want to ripen stuff i'm not saying it makes them ripen but what i'm saying is, is it's giving them the stuff that, it, that the plant now knows that it's getting that time you know naturally they would be getting these two at the end of the cycle so that works amazing this stuff has earthworm castings, bat guano, it's got all the other essential stuff that you're going to need. This is only a booster though. This is not an actual fertilizer. You don't want to use it for like uh, your flowering period. Like I said, we use it the last two or three weeks just to give it the extra taste and everything and to let it know what it's doing. So that's one thing. And then we want to talk about this one right here. This is what we use, and as you can see, the numbers are a lot lower on these. Three, two, four. This is for our babies. So, all the babies that you're seeing here, stuff like this, that's what these are getting, and they're getting low doses of it. They also get some, uh, some of our molasses, which this will give it calcium, iron, uh, sulfur, zinc, stuff like that. This is an added boost for that, so we give it to all our babies. And as they grow, it actually helps with all the microbes in itself. So um, that's why these numbers are so low, is because we actually don't need them high. And this actually is being used as soon as it's given to it. Liquid, liquid fertilizers are being used as you give it, rather than these fertilizers that go outside you lay it down you water this will go into the soil for the next couple waterings where this one is gone they, the plants actually use it then so indoors we're giving the plants feedings two times a week outdoors we only have to feed it once every two weeks so that's some of the differences that you're going to see with fertilizers and how they work trying to read the front of them can be a pain sometimes but look at the back See if it has stuff like earthworm casting. See if it has stuff like uh, um, bat guanos or you know things like that. Or see if it does colonate the microbes. If you look at the difference between organic and non-organic chemicals, are not going to help your soil. They are going to grow your plants good, but they're not going to help your soil. The second time around, you're going to have to pump a bunch of stuff back into the soil. One of the great things about organic. I don't have to put anything back into my soil. This stuff constantly is bringing my soils up. So when I do put my new plants in, I add some of my new fertilizers and I don't have to add everything that I have to add with chemicals to make this work. Chemicals can be very useful. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it. If you're in a place that all you can do is that, by all means, grow your own plants and everything. But the way I look at it is you're getting the same plants that you were to be buying at the store. So you can get them cheaper at the store. If you want to do this a healthy way, look at your fertilizers and make sure that it's a fertilizer you would use. Or if your cat drinks it out of a water bowl that it's not going to get sick. Or if your kid accidentally drinks it, you know. Stuff like that is very, very thing good things to think about just because you want to be conscious about helping not hurting so 
Um, once again, thank you for watching, and this is uh, Dan the Organic Man with fertilizers. Until next time, guys.